Welcome back to the new professional StarCraft 2. Allow me to introduce the Protoss player in the blue. The best Protoss player in Europe and, well, the rest of the world outside of Hero. It's the Twilight Toss. The mysterious Magspags up in a dead even match. These players ranked almost identically worldwide. But it is the most consistent, solid, and stalwart Zerg in the top left. The Rocky Zerg. It's Solar. Best of five. Protoss versus Zerg. As I al already mentioned, these players are within 10 points right now on the Aligulac rating. Rank 8 and 9, respectively, worldwide. I think Max Pax actually has the edge there. Um, and I expect... I've, I've been recommended this match. All right. Source, just trust me, bro. Another thing you gotta trust me on is liking... And subscribing, yes. Jimmy, Jimmy, one, 1,157 likes. And uh, I'll cast another series. And I'll probably do it anyways. As we got plenty of good games for the fans. But thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. Though it's hard to get much better than Max Pax's micro so far. Wow. Perfect adept micro. <laughs> He's coming in for more. Wants to get a drone. I mean, he just killed some langs, but he put a lot of pressure on. And Solar actually got a little supply block there. He's only at 31 drones, so being supply blocked and being slowed down at this timing allows Max Pax to more comfortably get his third base up. The Zerglings are just now coming across the map, but he kept both Adepts alive. Which means he should be able to hold on to this with an Oracle. Yeah, the Zerglings will get one of them jammed in there. That pylon almost feels like uh, it will deny some of the mining. This is the um, price you pay as Protoss for the lack of door-based technology. But uh, overall, Max Pax comfortably getting his third base up, getting those oracles out. And Max Pax has kind of um, evolved, if you would from your, essentially, the build he was known for early on, which is the Max Pags build, which is one of the cheesiest yet macro-oriented plays in Protoss versus Terran, proxying a gateway, just a single gate in the early game. He's come to be, I think, even more than Hero, a macro, a shield Protoss even, who is more focused on getting to the later game and making sure he has all the pieces to put together and play all the way up through 200 supply. So, I, this is something we've seen before. I think Clem is another example, and a nemesis to Max Pax, but Clem used to be the, um, I, I mean, younger players want a micro. Older players know how to micro, but know when it's time to. Uh, and that bit of experience and uh, kind of just growth in play style mentally and physically, which sounds weird, but is super apparent when it comes to Max Pax and Clem, uh, and why I think they're still, well, getting better, visibly, at all stages of the game. Okay, I don't mean, like, losing your stalker to a bunch of circlings. He already knew we're there. That's not what I was really going for. Um, but I more mean getting 60 probes, still being able to put pressure on the other side. Solar just kind of streaming Zerglings in. He'll get a unit or two. He's got a Spire on the way. And it's going to be charged first out of Max Packs, not opting for Blink. So if he doesn't spot the Spire in a timely manner, then he could be left with minimal anti-air. And even though you have a Stargate, you can't just start building Phoenixes when, when Muta's, Muta's already ransacking your base. The best defense against Muta's, though, it is a strong and well-supported offense. As the Muta's themselves, not great fighting units, you invest a lot of time and effort in making sure uh, you can get them in the first place, and they just don't stack up very well against things like Archons or even Stalkers in small numbers. Solar is buying time right now. The Zerglings clearly trying to drag the attentions of the Protoss army, but not easily distracted here at all. The Oracles are coming forward. I wonder if Magpex is starting to get a little suspicious of uh, 
What we got over here? Some zealots slicing through. No upgrades on either side. Both players working on plus one, but a long way off as the charge lots come in. The queen's kind of exposed. The oracle's helping to burn through. Charge lots slicing. And the oracles with the pulsar beams. Here comes some of the roaches. And Solar is forced to spend his bank on units just before the spire finishes. Max Max didn't know about the spire, but he knew that Solar seemed somewhat weak. And he's pressing the issue now. So we're getting punished for a Spire that Max Pax didn't even know about. And this is the big issue with going for Spire at all. It's so expensive and takes so long to come online. It leaves you with quite a vulnerability. But as I say it, the roaches come together. The attack is, is whittled down. The oracles are still alive. Yeah, back at home. Did he recall? No, he just flew him back for some defense. And now the mutas are on the field. Though Archons have joined Max Pax's army. Makes it a lot better with anything in support. Well, the mutas will be spotted here, giving <clears throat> a tiny bit of warning. Cancels a void ray, immediately starts a phoenix. And even one or two phoenixes can help out immensely against dealing, well, uh, with dealing with these mutalisks. They technically, and now this is very technical, technically muta should never be able to hit phoenixes. Phoenixes can attack while moving, and have more range than mutas while being slightly faster so uh, now in practice the ranges are close enough and the speeds are close enough max pax has taken down his own pylon in order to free his immortal which unpowers both the other robos he blocked off his own immortal i can relate to that one but he had another pylon on the way it's not the end of the world even though there's a contaminate there all right, the fourth base not going to happen. The meters are going to be too much. Max Pex down, 165 to 125 supply. He starts a Colossus just to have some back, uh, backing support here. <clears throat> Two Colossi. Now I'm bothering with Disruptors. Honestly, Disruptors are danger as much to your own charge lots as they can be. To Roaches, Zerglings, and even Ravagers. So Colossi, while a overall weaker a more reliable option because they have a tendency not to shoot your own units in the back. So far, Max Pax has boxed out the Mutas. Solar building some Banelings. Now, Banelings did get that nerf. We've gone on and on about five less HP, a bunch less damage with plus two melee attack. No longer the bonus against life from the upgrades that allowed them to two-shot or one-shot probes. But... <clears throat> They still serve the same purpose as a rolling explosive meat shield that can uh, force armies out of position or just roll right through them. Stasis is triggered. Now, very key point. There is no infestation pit here. Solar falling into the trap of mass layer tech. We'll see if it's a trap or instead a boon by the end of this. Stasis blocks out two groups of Banelings, allowing Max Pax to focus for a little longer on the left flank. But he's going to be denied the fourth Nexus yet again. But the stasis saves the day. Those probes thinking they're lucky stargates right now. Though, of course, the stasis doesn't kill units, unfortunately. The Banelings are rolling in. The Archons are holding the line, and the Colossi are firing over the top, melting through the Banelings. And Zealots will force Solar back as Max Pax closes the supply gap. What a game so far. Yeah, this good recommendation. I wasn't... I mean, these two are, are literally about as evenly matched as you can get on paper. And it looks like in practice as well. Skyzerg. Corruptor. Muta. Up against Colossi. This is starting to look more and more like a Wings of Liberty style game. Mutas and Corruptors with roaches on the ground. And Colossi for Max Pax. I don't even know if Max Pax remembers Wings of Liberty. He was only half a dozen years old or so when it came out. The Phoenixes take out. <laughs> Just another base going to go down. I don't believe he even canceled that one, but he does have money. And the Mutas going for a pylon here, but the Phoenixes will intercept. And that uh, should be enough. He might lose a Phoenix or two. But the Mutas will be taken out. That threat removed. And Solar really needs to get an infestation pit now. It's going from <clears throat> dicey to an oversight, which is a weird uh, kind of leap to make, both um, 
uh, vocabulary and uh, mentally. And now I've, I've confused myself. But the point is that if he doesn't have a hive, he doesn't have vipers or a greater spire, then Max Pax's army is just straight up better. The Archons, 2-2 two, two, done. There's nothing on the ground that's going to be able to stop this. Mass Banelings, that's so many Archons. The Banelings are going to try to roll through. Archons holding the line for now. The shields being stripped away. But many of the Archons do survive. Stasis blocks out another group of Banelings. The Corruptors will finally take out the meticulously microed oracles and now start to work on the Colossi. There's not that much in support. The Colossi well, being protected by the Archons. Down to two. And the ground army starting to melt here. Max Pax versus Solar. And Solar holds on. Oh, another group of... Well, reinforcements coming through. Does he have Blink done? He doesn't even have Blink started, so that answers the question. Max Pax unable to reinforce in time. The Colossi knocked down by the Corruptors. But Solar holds. 78 to 59 workers. The key part of this, though, Max Pax with the aggressive defense. He finally got a fourth base up. It cost him much of the complexity of his army. But... He was able... Solar, where is the infestation pit? Where is it? It's becoming negligent at this point. As Solar continues, he, he might think that Max Pack's going to hit him again. Solar wants to defend his hatchery, but there's no one coming to save you, Solar. No matter how many times you misclick the ping button. Which is weird, you can even do that in 1v1, but... Thank you for demonstrating. There it is, finally. Solar finds a little bit of space, mentally and physically in order to back off and get some more tech max packs adds in the blink i don't blame max packs at all for kind of staying on the same level of tech as he's one bad fight away from losing the game the zealots throw themselves into the banelings which do less damage to them by the way but still kill them in uh, relatively few hits and max packs is forced off his base again does he have any more warpins down goes the pylon but he keeps the probes alive and the uh, wave of corrosive bows was just now used. The disruptor clips some Roach Ravager. He finally brings the danger balls onto the table. God, what a game. One of my favorites so far. The new patch. All right, this is a best of one, right? Whoa, oh, 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 and he saves. The disruptors in the war prism there at the last second. Archons! He, he still has about 20 more seconds on those disruptor cooldowns. There's... How many corruptors are left? Zero. That's not very many. Nothing left to contest the war prism, really. So the disruptors should have a bit of a field day. Oh, Roach Ravager still. Hive is on the way. Max Pax has been battling for his life, whereas Solar has been trying to close this out. Max Pax has been more cost effective, but Solar has mined 10,000 more minerals. Though about an equal amount of gas. The di oh, where did the disruptors? Oh my god, the Archons! Even, even bringing one of their- come with us, Billy! All right, here we are. Oh my god, 11 Archons. They get bonus damage against biological. Unfortunately, they don't have whatever that was in the Legacy of the Void cinematic, where they kind of grab an Ultra's face and teleport them into the Void. We need that one. Suicide Archons. Then again, Archons are more expensive than almost every unit that isn't an Ultralisk. So, there's the Greater Spire, though. The Greater Spire, well, he lost all the Corruptor, so the Greater Spire, not nearly as natural a transition as it may have been just a few minutes ago. But the Blink Stalkers hold the line for now. Max Pax desperately holding on the four bases. The thing is, even though Solar's had the whole map, he's working towards Greater Spire, it doesn't really feel like he's had this level of inevitable momentum you'll sometimes see zergs in the late game where the protoss feels like well i guess that's that certainly doesn't help losing a prism here but he does spot the greater spire oh and out of nowhere disruptor shot center mass 
massive connection onto the banelings, and this is it. This is your opportunity. Will you capture it? Or will you let it slip? Right now, the army supplies are about as good as they're ever gonna get. Max Pax, with that massive connection onto the banelings, has opened up some of the map for his army. The supplies, 176 to one, uh, give her that they're even, they're the same. Adrenal glands done though. And another round of banelings are rolling in, into the battery. The probes are on the run. The Archon, oh, there you go. There's the nerf to the banelings at work, but the zerglings will finish them off. More banelings rolling in. Max Pax is essentially giving up his economy. Well, he's gonna take some of Solars as well. Max Pax needs to bring his entire army to bear here. The Broodlords are difficult, but not outright deadly. Uh, there's nine of them right now. It's just enough. The Archons, well, Broodlings that have enough will get one shot by the Archons, but the, the Broodlords themselves are still difficult to contend with, raining down the Broodlings. You still have to attack them to kill them. I said, dispensing uh, unrivaled wisdom yet again. <laughs> Spontaneously combusting those uh, Zerglings, or whatever it is they're doing with the energy arms. Oh, he didn't kill the hatchery to the north. And that's a mining base that, that Solar needs and may be able to use to close this out. Still, 11 go- a dozen Archons. The Queen's back there. Oh, he charges up the Void Ray, but off to the left side, the Blink Stalkers. Snipe off one Broodlord. But Solar, he's rolled with the punches. And, uh... Just the fact he's mine now, 13,000 more minerals. Despite losing 5,000 more, that's, he can afford it. And I don't know how Max Pax is going to turn this now. A single infester, highlighting the fact that we've seen exactly zero infestors and vipers throughout this game. No real spellcasters outside of the disrupt, well, almost every Protoss unit is a spellcaster, but no conventional spellcasters. Outside of the Rupters, really. Oracles, okay, never mind. Like, pretty much every Protoss unit is a spellcast. The Void Rank gets the base! And even though Solar has... Wow, that's quite an income gap. Uh, 200 to 115 supply. Solar trying not to uh, get caught out of position. His army should be enough. He's got 100 Zerglings. 100 zerglings but mass archon well yeah they don't they don't care about your zerglings too much he's juggling archons to chase him down i think max packs has a pretty good bead on solar's economy the problem is max packs does not have a four you need a four he's running out of money a larva bleeding out oh it's so sad Ugh. Infestors with Neural Parasite. Turning some of those Archons against each other could definitely close this out. I doubt Max Packs. How many Observers? He's got two on the map. But this army, Infestor Broodlord. Tried and true. And there's nothing that can easily snipe off Infestors at range either. That is the issue. We've slowed things down as neither player can really afford to lose another army. It's been Max Pax on the ropes this entire time. I'm hard pressed to see a way off him. But honestly not as overwhelming. Like this isn't, I, I joke that Solar is Cyril's stunt double. And this does feel like it again. Where Solar is in this commanding hive tech position but he doesn't have a massive bank. His upgrades are good but not great. Only attack upgrades here. That is an army that is very difficult to beat. And I'd be very, very impressed if Max Pax is able to do so. But he certainly has the tools. Burrow and Neural Parasite are complete. Here come the Zerg. Max Pax with only relatively conventional Protoss. He's just gonna give up his fourth. Maybe, oh, oh, he recalls the Archons out. 
you know, very odd scenario there. The Archon drop to the left flank. Just trying to catch him out on the map may be the very best option. Fighting that entire army simultaneously is a recipe for potential disaster. Is there actually any anti-air? There's a single corruptor that will force the issue. 22 drones have died, but the army supply right now for solar, 172. That's a lot of zerg. But the void rays will burn through another hatchery. Max Pax is giving it all he's got. That the void rays, fungal. Assimilation successful. The Void Ray is being turned. He's going to sacrifice the Stalkers. Uh, well, there is an odd scenario where if there's no anti-air left at all, but I don't think we're going to get there. Solar is broke, but he's broke at 194 supply, which is much better than being broke at 85. You rarely hear the Void Ray uh, Neural Parasite sound. Well... Especially when Dark's not playing. Solar is long distance mining. If only Magpex was able to hold on to his fourth a little bit longer. But Solar has maintained that. Well, wait a second. Oh, uh, this is the big danger. There's the fungal. He's trying to. He's trying to make sure there's no neural parasite here. Getting underneath. Oh, I don't know. That is way too much Zerg. Solar overruns him. In game one, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't quick. And I think we're in store for a quite a back and forth here. Max Pax just never really able to break out and get that fourth base. But a great game. I, I, I really enjoyed that one. Broodlord still very strong. Solar a little late on the hive tech, but only because Max Pax was keeping so much pressure on him that he really, I'm sure from that perspective, um, it is very hard to judge that you have some, oh, we don't stop for anyone here. All right. We never stop. Never stop. Don't pause. Okay. Like and subscribe. Okay. You can pause. Like and subscribe. There you go. Thank you again to World Team League for putting on these World versus Korea matches, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but the Jimmy in the description. I know nobody reads it. That's not the point. It's plausible deniability. How many times? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, what a game. But solar reverting, not really reverting, but eventually progressing to that old school brood lord and faster. Still strong, though nerfed in many ways in the in the previous patch. Broodlords are faster, but broodlings are way weaker. Only have 20 HP instead of 30, which means most Protoss units one or two shot them. Infestors, Fungal does uh, 25 instead of 30 damage, and the cast range is reduced to nine uh, from 10, which is still quite a lot against Blink Stalkers and Archons. So overall. But Protoss, on the other hand, um, the mothership, which we didn't see last game, but that's only because it cloaked itself. So wait, it doesn't cloak itself. Uh, no, no. Max Pax. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of racking my brain. Maybe a transition to carriers earlier on. Max Pax does love working with the Blink Stalkers. And just ground armies as long as possible instead of trying to turtle the carriers. I don't think there are too many Protoss out there who love just sitting back and building carriers as the late game army. Even though it does, it is usually the best army you can. Um, as Solar eventually begrudgingly admitted that Brood Lords were uh, a key unit in that situation. We don't stop again. We're never gonna. Ready. We're ready. Are you ready? Good. Stargate is the choice.
I'm gonna come in looking for drones. My expect so active with those early adepts. The little uh, Ws here, the speed zones that increase speed by about 35 percent. Really need to know it's 30 or 35. The cousin of the Bubulas, the slow zones, which do the same thing but in reverse. 30 percent, 35 percent slow. Not attack speed, just movement. Um, though for some units, like melee units especially, that can mean the same thing. It's also interesting how they're set up on top of these mostly high ground areas, which means that air units can use them to kind of catch up with ground armies. Uh, even though you can kind of skirt around. We've seen people slingshotting disruptor shots in and out of the zone, and it is a noticeable enough difference. You can find, you can sometimes get a few more units. Pretty cool, I think, the way they're uh, laid out on this map. Solaris, by the way. Also a cool name. Just throwing that one out there. Actually, very hot. Oracle. Tries to poke and prod, doesn't find too much. But the Adepts, on the other hand. Three kills for three Adepts. And a lot of damage on the Oracle. Don't love it. But Solar is down. This is the phase of the game where the Zerg player will usually have significantly less workers than the Protoss. Um, but then the question is whether Protoss can build up their production, their infrastructure in time to counteract Zerg's eventual build up themselves. It's kind of a, <clears throat> a back and forth on, on waves of production. Uh, a lot more, I think, than Zerg versus Terran, especially as well. Uh, as Protoss and Zerg, but there are plenty of Protoss styles that involve building more units <clears throat> or more supply of units than the Zerg. As, uh, you try to build up enough gateway units to overwhelm the early production, which it looks like is the direction Max Pax is headed here. He's going for the blink and the plus one, where your early focus is going to be getting enough blink stalkers out on the map to control the creep, ideally deny a fourth base, and build up. Well, sometimes that's the end goal, is to use those to win the game. But uh, most of the time, it's to have a strong follow-up, usually involving a robotics, but uh, we'll see. Those oracles taken quite a bruising on the way by, but still intact. Unfortunately, they have no SCVs to repair them. Hmm. Road speed on the way. These two going towards Hydralis Den. <clears throat> Hydras, a little bit better in, in the sense they get their upgrades quicker. Hydralis range upgrade now is 25, 25 cheaper and research is 10, 15 seconds quicker. Something like that. This effectively means you can get, <laughs> you can get, um, fully upgraded hydras out eh, 10 15 seconds with it's not a huge buff but it is a buff overall to the hydras especially considering the range upgrade is much more meaningful on defense since creep already provides the speed benefit you don't really need the muscular augments muscular augments are more for a counter attack which he may want to do if he can hold on against max packs is just cutting blink timing here where? Yeah, going for the Hydra is done. Getting the upgrades isn't going to make the difference if the Hydras aren't on the field. Well, Blink Stalkers. Max Pack's already taken a fourth behind. This Blink Micro is immaculate. How many Stalkers has he lost? Zero. Well, that's not very many. And Max Pax has not put his economy behind this, by the way. He is still building probes. He is still getting upgrades. Oh my god. There is a stasis right there. I think Solar realized it. He still hasn't lost the Stalker. That can't be true forever. Gets one. Okay. Well. 
he may be overstaying his welcome here as the Hydra count gets higher and higher. But this Blink Micro has been near perfect. Ooh, that stasis. Eh, I'm not sure that helps more, actually. He removes three roaches from the fight, but Max Pax, remember during all this, is still building up. This is not the end goal, even though he's making it really look like it. This is not the, the final progression. Oh my god, stop right there, criminal scum. Wow. I'm gonna take out some of the roaches. He's created a force field of roaches here. And Solar is struggling to put enough on the field. There's a, a charge lock counter attack. He's got charge lots in the third. Charge lots in the main. The Blink Stalker still laying on the pressure using the Dubula here. And Solar cannot keep up. Solar is starting to... He's lost 10 drones now. The third base is uncontested. It's just Hydra's over here against the Stalkers. Hydra's with some cover can beat the Stalkers, but... They don't have any. He's just taking them out. Great Blink Micro, Max Pags. Well, 56 drones, which means the army supply is good. But plus two attack, he's taking another base. What a tone shift here. As Max Pags just, well, he's got the army. He's got the, oh, the force feet, I mean the stasis. They're synonymous, Max Pags with a beautiful timing. Near perfect micro. And solar. The hydras were just far too much of a reach. Beautifully done. Max Packs cut solar apart in a relatively short game with a decisive ending. All right. So Max Packs not going to be tilted. Not going to be uh, forced into some crazy. That was a near perfect. Like that's how in your mind it's supposed to go as Protoss. You simply keep control of the game with the oracles and the adepts, and then you smoothly transition into a solid blink plus one timing while still building up your economy and your infrastructure. And then you overwhelm the zerg, who simply cannot keep up because your units are too cost effective. That's all great on paper. <laughs> well, there's your example. If you want to take a template home on, on how to play it, I think Magspax just showed simply micro perfectly with blink stalkers and maintain a marginal edge in economy until you can probe for weakness with groups of charge lots and and cause the zerg economy to collapse all at once. Here we are on equilibrium, our grayscale map. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. I, I shouldn't point it out at the beginning of each cast because then people won't stop. I'm sorry. Somebody do it all in. I've already vetoed this map on the ladder, not because of the layout, but... Well, okay, it's just one of our nine maps. And it did make it through the veto process. I don't think... The only the only time it, it's a particular struggle is against Terran. Because there are uh, close air distances here. And a centralized gold base that um, can make life difficult. Hmm. One to one. Both players. And it's an even match so far. I love the mid game focus as well of both of them. Clearly interested in building up those. That's that's my preferred style of playing as well. Is that between like 100 and 180 supply kind of mid-game multi-prong battles. I'm not as as um, much of a fan of the super early game all-in timings or the kind of uh, almost chess-like late game where you have the right units in the right spot and you move them around like uh, part of a preset composition. No, the very fluid kind of back and forth where you're you're just distributing units around and trying to get some sort of advantage um but at high speed that is i think the the can be the most entertaining part of the game and uh i love to watch it especially in this matchup where it's relatively rare 
Terran versus Zerg, I think, is part of the reason why it's historically been the most entertaining and, and consistently popular matchup is, well, one, it's very record, it's humans versus bug aliens, and I know, how dare you, but, and two, is uh, because of the strength of the units and no neither side having particularly powerful ones means that you're encouraged to fight on the map and look for advantage as opposed to kind of turtle up to the right unit composition. But now we've got a bit of a wrinkle here. Solar has taken the rich base in the center. Rich Vespine Geyser and six gold patches. The reason you have six instead of eight is the actual mining of this base is the same as a blue base with eight mineral patches. But because you mine seven minerals instead of five, aka 40% more, there are less patches in general. So the benefit is you mine it with less workers, not that you get more income overall. So it's still a huge benefit. Same with the Rich Vespine Geyser. Um, you get as much as two geysers, which is obviously incredibly efficient. So, will Max Packs make a play of it, or will he just... He looks like he's building up towards the blink and the plus one. Hmm. I'm very interested to see what Solar does with this. Is it just going to be mass roaches? He hasn't even taken the gas geyser, which is super weird to me. Okay, well, stop listening. <laughs> Four more gates. Six in total. So, not super all in, but definitely looking to build up that unit count. Max Pax doesn't seem. He doesn't feel obligated to go put some pressure on that base immediately. He's just going to let him have it. Beautiful Oracle Micro. It is a, quite a finicky unit to Micro. The best players can make it look like they attack while moving because of the acceleration on the Oracle. It has a tendency to glide. Uh, so if you time it just perfectly, you can find yourself looking, like I said, essentially like attacking while moving. There it is, the plus one, the blink. Now I'm expecting a fourth base out of Max Packs. He's, it looks like he's gonna play some overall defense. He is moving out now with the first blink stalkers, but this is cover for that fourth nexus. This is cover for that fourth nexus, right Max Packs? He's got the blink stalkers at the front. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so Zerglings at the back. He started plus one melee attack. No, that's the only upgrade so far. A depth shade by. So we're only at 60 drones, which it's okay to be on um, a slight deficit when you have this gold. But, oh, Max Packs. Fourth base, unfortunately, gonna get surrounded and canceled. Does get the cancel off there. Yeah, the income gap is not that significant as. Max Pax has had a slight probe lead for most of this, and he's been comfortably mining from his third. So, it isn't too much of a deficit. Gets delayed slightly, but... A whole lot of stalkers here. Stalker's definitely a difficult unit to use. Uh, but Max Pax, one of the few players, I think, qualified to really make him en masse and make him look great even though they are one of the most fragile units for the cost. No Hydras this game from Solar. Despite dealing with a very similar unit composition, he's reverted to the Ravager mainly. I think the Hydras are just too expensive. Uh, 50 gas apiece is just too much. And, well, another Stasis. The Stasis is... is by the way, Stasis Ward got a buff to their vision. Um, from 4 to 7, which still puts them below, I believe, your average ground unit, which has 9. Don't quote me on that. But is much better than before, whereas it only had 
they barely had enough vision to see the radius of the stasis itself. Let's see if we can... Yeah, so the stasis... Uh, there's nothing here we can see because he's already at the watchtower, but... It is quite a nice benefit. A, a little bit of a side grade. I would call that a mild to moderate buff, but a buff indeed. Uh, especially for players like Max Pax who are so active on it. But here comes the Ravager Bang. Max Pax down 50 army supply. But his army overall is of comparable value. Uh, he's down 2,000 minerals in value, but the gas is about the same. That's a lot of banelings. There's no splash damage out right now. At all. He's got the Rubble Bay on the way, but it's a long way off. The Blink Stalkers are going to absorb some of the banelings and then blink back. Stasis creates a bit of a force field here, but is it going to be enough? He's far enough away. Where are the Oracles? The Oracles need to participate in the Battle of the Probes on the run. He hasn't trapped him in. That was actually a lot of foresight there not to trap him in, but the Banelings are chasing down the probes. Oh, Rod! No! Oh, wait, it wasn't too bad. Oh, it was pretty bad, though. Uh, <laughs> but the Stalkers are going friend. Oh, how are we? What are we doing? Actually, Max Pax, while well, he might lose the probes, is turning the fight. Blocks on the Ravagers. Turns it all around. And it's not nearly as bad as it originally was. Some... He's got a few charge lots into the main. A casual set of corrosive bows a little bit late. War Prism gets some of the charge lots out. Max Pack <laughs> Surrounds and kills. Some of the Ravagers. And now the army supplies are about evened up. Max Pax maintains a worker lead. He sacrificed the probes on the altar of victory. And now the charge lots are back in the main. Solar has to scramble to deal with the front line here. And I think once again, we're going to go back to our corners and rebuild. And who has the advantage now? That's a very good question. On paper, it looks like solar, but look at the upgrades and the tech. A oh, Robo Bay finished. Max Pax is working on a fifth Nexus. Solar is down 13 workers. I would actually put Max Pax in an advantageous position here, especially considering the upgrades. All he has to do is take relatively close trades and build up. Ooh, these banelings could change it. That is the difference. That right there is the nerf to banelings. That would have killed 15 probes a couple weeks ago. Instead, it, okay, not 15, but all of these probes, which is only like six or seven, but you get the idea. That would have been an entire a half a base of dead probes for a single bang. It would be crazy if there was a unit that could just wipe out half a base of probes at any point in the game, wouldn't it? Terrence. <clears throat> which I think was a fair nerf here. And definitely contributes to this game being much, much closer. All right, the Ravagers, so we're fighting over this little choke point in the center of the map, opened up from a set of rocks. But Max Pax closing in on 3-3. Three, three. Extended thermal lands on the way. Solar does not have a hive. It's going to be very difficult to hold on here. He doesn't have any upgrades on his Roach Ravager just on the zerglings and banelings and he doesn't have too many of those more banelings going in the stasis wards are perfect another one is dragged out more stasis cutting the army down to size the colossus kind of stuck in front of everything here he manages to micro it back but the blink stalkers are holding the line they have a they have a five upgrade advantage over the roach ravager Missile attacks level one denied. I think some charge lots are slicing through. Oracles are burning up the Ravagers. The charge lots are gonna be so hard for the Roaches themselves to take out. Extended Thermal Lance is done, and Max Pax is now at a 30 supply lead. What a game. Max Pax not getting baited into doing some sort of crazy all in attack on the gold base. Just calmly takes his own. The Banelings are rolling by again. Oh, Corrosive Bowels get a surprising amount of connections, but Solar's treading water right now. He does not have the tech. He does not have the economy. He's kind of just waiting for Max Pax to come execute him. If Max Pax makes a huge mistake and blunders his army in, 
then maybe the infestation pit starts. There goes the Colossus. But another one comes up. The Blank Stalkers. Max Max has 2,400 minerals in the bank. I don't think he's, uh... It, it's gonna be very hard to blunder into anything at this point. The charred lot's just slicing up. Solar's bleeding out now. The... the... Zerglings, not even the roaches, are gonna do well against the charred lots. Max Pex forcing, like, whenever he attacks, he always has a couple kickers. He has a couple sets of charred thoughts sent out. And that means it makes the difference. What a game. Max Pex taking command of the situation. That last game, not a fluke, but instead a demonstration of what Max Pex is trying to accomplish. Beautifully done, I gotta say. The most solid Protoss I've seen thus far. And Hero has had some great games, but Hero is like watching a, a roller coaster without railings. Wait, or what, whatever keeps a roller coaster on the track. Just a roller coaster in the air. Could crash at any time. That's not how physics work. Anyways, going in to game four before I dig myself into more of a hole without Burrow. Max Pags versus Solar. And Max Pags with some inspirational Protoss gameplay. Solar, I gotta say, not nearly as inspired with the Zerg. He's playing yesterday's Zerg against tomorrow's Protoss. And it's just not working out. I think, so I want to point out the key difference in uh, game one on Oceanborn. Max Pags went charge first. He went charge and Solar went mutus, which is about as mediocre of a start as you can get. He didn't get much with the charge launch. He, I don't think he ever ended up... It took forever to get blink. So he's reverted to the blink in the plus one. Solar has not found any space to get to mutus or really anything else. And that's gotten Max Pags two games in a row. This is a very educational series as well. I'm learning a lot. It isn't very different from the games we were seeing a month ago, but I think that's... Well, I think part of it is that we don't have an early game unit that's taken up a, a completely different role than it did. <coughs> Cyclones. And that makes it a little easier to see the differences um in the meta and how they balanced out i think the plus two baneling uh no longer one shotting probes is a fair and balanced change um as well the plus the minus five hp on the baneling it makes sense uh i don't think solar is going towards hive tech as quickly as he could be He's still used to using those Ravagerling Bane compositions. And Magspags has correctly realized that they just simply aren't as strong. It wasn't a huge difference before, but the threat of plus two Banelings just obliterating mineral lines when you either were looking the other way or simply didn't have enough units was what undercut so many of those more macro-oriented Protoss. It made it so difficult to consistently play like three, four bases with a because at any point three or four banelings may wipe out a third of your economy that is no longer nearly as likely and that certainly is on display here uh with max packs going toe to toe in full-on macro games against solar the zerglings just rebelled and Decided to try to murder a drone, which made it that much easier for the adepts to get a couple more. But we will lose one adept. Oracle on the way. It is and has been Stargate. I believe every single game. Not bothering with the Twilight until after you get some map control. And the Oracles have really 
uh, made the difference. The stasis to partition and, and kind of cut the Zerg army into more bite-sized pieces. As well as, in a pinch, adding some damage themselves. Definitely a, a huge help. Oh, wow. No spore, but... Yeah. 41 to 35 workers. And Max Pack's taking his third. We're gonna do it again. Bane Link. That's a very quick Bane Link nest. In the grand scheme of things. 16 more lings on the way. I'm starting to think solar has unsavory unsavory intentions. The oracles will spot it. Loses one, though. Yeah. This is, as the kids say, pretty sus. He's mainly busting him, by the way, in case I was Huh. Twilight. And Forge are on the way, but Solar has decided that the best chance he has to beat Max Pax here is to kill him before he gets off the ground. Twenty he has so many Zer fifty Zerglings. There, right now there are fifty Zerglings against four units. There are two Oracles and two Stalkers. That is not much. Here come the Banes. Do the Oracles have enough energy to make the difference? Max Pax, I don't think, is realizing the scale of commitment from Solar right now, but he's starting to do so. Here come the Banelings, waddling in towards the natural. Now, the Oracles could just start targeting him, and indeed he will do so. This base is likely to go down. The Banelings struggling to get anything done. The Overcharge a bit late, as it will get depowered there. The Oracle's not quite motivated. Running out of energy now. This trickle is becoming a flood of Zerglings. Uh, 12 probes down. Not that that's the end of the game here. Honestly, not the most... Well, these stalkers. He didn't expect another wave of Zerglings. The stalkers just panicking. And there's nothing left to stop them from ripping apart the Nexus. And behind the solar is building up drones. It was not the cleanest attack, but the sheer amount of units... Solar has decided a good old-fashioned punch him in the face strategy is probably the best way to interrupt Max Pax as he goes for this kind of methodical bare-bones Protoss third. And a big weakness is you simply don't have that many units until after you get plus one in blink, until after you build up the gateway count on that third base economy. So Solar just comes across with a half-hearted slug across the jaw. Well, if Protoss had jaws, then that's what... It, just in the face in general. It doesn't matter. I... D and that's it. And now Magspex is down to two bases against Solar with four. He's got a Hydra down on the way. And the big advantage that Magspex had against the Hydras on the game on Solaris was the economy. Behind it, Solar was building Hydras on an even or worse economy to Magspex. That is not the case here. And now with plenty of Zerglings on the field, the creep already spread out. I think the Hydras make a lot more sense as a high economy choice. Max Pax with a bit. He, it felt like he was in disbelief at how many units. Like, the stalkers kept coming up like, are you serious? Are you still Are you still making Zerglings? I can't believe. Why are you still making it? And then the stalkers like, I don't know. Which, uh, they do not do well when, when the Zerglings outnumber them 10 to 1. Stasis on the back line. He's trying to get some progress here, but the Zerglings on the other side should be able to take out while well, the Stalkers blink into a nice choke point there. Plus one is done. Max Pax still has a, a lot of options. He's going to blink back, trying to drag him into the Stasis. I think Solar has gotten wise to the situation, but Max Pax makes Blink Stalkers look uncomfortably good. I say that because it's so hard to micro- Oh my god, he got him in the stasis! And that gives Max Pax a chance to continue his efforts. He's gonna be able to target some of the queens. Gets one. Eh, he's overstaying his welcome, though. The Hydras are here. Plenty of Zerglings. Another stasis, but it doesn't kill units. 
You definitely, if those wings come out of stasis, these stalkers are gonna have a real tough time. It's not really an if with stasis, it's a when. Max Pax has retaken his base. He's rebuilt his economy. He hasn't lost too many stalkers. 117 lings dead to 12 stalkers so far. Not that that's an exact trade, but... Solar now. Muscular augments on the way. I assume he has range. He's got his groovy spines. Baneling speed is done. Another stasis attempted. Oh, the probes are locked out by the beautiful force fields. Plus one armor. And, uh, this is looking dicey. All right, it's going to take near-perfect micro. And even that, that's a lot of Zerg. Shield battery overcharge. Huge in this scenario. Taken out by the Banes. The Hydra is trying to fight. The Oracle staying on the back line. They can't fight the Hydra's heads up. And Max Pax actually has the concave here. He has the upgrade advantage, especially over the Hydra's. The shields are being stripped away. The Zerglings are trickling through. The Hydra DPS, though, is starting to overwhelm. And Max Pax just simply doesn't have enough. He made it so... Wow, it was so close. Yeah, so far. Solar strikes back. And he takes it. And he's gonna bring us to game five. What a series. Evenly matched indeed. But it does truly feel like Solar is very reliant on these timings, getting damage done. Not that Mag's Packs is unique there too. Both of them have found these these weak points in their opponent and honestly i have no idea for game five solar found that honestly almost like a half-hearted baneling all in but it made the difference it didn't quite kill him but it did enough and that brings us to our most beautiful map hackity here for game five my favorite, just on looks alone. I guess. Oh, I thought. Oh, he bamboozled him. Solar. I was like, is he expanding? Is he proxy hatching? He's proxy hatching his own natural. The probe came up to the high ground. Solar sent out the drone towards the third. Clever. Usually not something that works. It's just players have gotten so used to taking the third. Protoss assume they will do so if they see the probe. <sighs> but yeah, going into game five, this is one of the closest, if not the closest, and most interesting series. That truly demonstrates a new dynamic on the new patch while still being very similar to the old. Evenly matched, evenly ranked indeed. Um, Max Pax and Solar. I think they're both usually... The odd thing is, they're both usually positioned as the, uh... The foil. The, the challenger to whoever they're playing. Whether it's like Clem or Maru... Um, in their respective regions. Serral, uh, for both of them, actually. <laughs> Solar, one of the few players who consistently beats Serral, as it takes a Zerg, usually, and Solar's been the one to do it several times now. Oh, yeah. They're just so good. But I, I don't even know, like, I think it's just a little bit of mechanics and consistency. Like, Hero is... Oftentimes ranked above Max Packs. I think it's partially because Hero embraces that kind of YOLO Protoss style that sometimes benefits more. Like, Max Packs is playing this very consistent, and again, a Stargate style. And Solar kind of figured it out last game. It leaves you vulnerable in many ways, if uh, especially Zergs adapt and are able to counter it. Um, you don't have nearly as much flexibility as Protoss, as your tech just costs so much. As a Stargate, 150, 150. Uh, Robo, 151. Every, every bit of your tech costs gas. On top of that, you usually need upgrades 
of some sort, or very gas-intensive units. And uh, that makes it difficult. Oh my. So, Max Pax realizing there's high ground vision to that pervert pillar there. Been a little while since we saw that mechanic, but clever move. The Overlord will get in and see the Stargate. Building an oracle, though, that won't be particularly surprising. The Zergling's gonna try to save the day. May actually find the probe, but the oracle... <laughs> what an exchange here. The little details. The oracle stops the Zerglings from stopping the Stalker from, from killing the Overlord. Or, yes, that was right. There is already that Stalker at the wall. And so far, Max Packs, an immaculate opener. Very, very thin margins here, but he gets everything done. Gets his third, keeps all his units alive, kills the Ovi. It isn't a game ender if you don't do any of those things, but it certainly helps. Adept's heading out. Oracles. Two oracles. Usually you leave one at home, the third oracle, just for safety. A bit of Miss Micro. But the Adepts come in towards the third. The Queen's will angrily get off my creep! Ah, uh, but gets two kills and a pretty solid scout here. You get an idea of how many drones there are. How many queens? That can be a giveaway on uh, whether or not there is going to be a massive Baneling bust. Indeed, there is not. So, very key here. And now plus one melee. A whole bunch more drones built by Solar, but Max Pax has already a 56 probes and counting. He's got Blink plus one, four more gateways, and it's shaping up to be a clean Blink plus one timing. This is... He, he's essentially taken Hero's build, and it feels like he's per perfected it. Right now, Max Pax is playing Hero's style of Protoss versus Zerg better than Hero. Uh, not that Hero's been playing... Po Hero's had a lot of success since the new patch. Not that... Uh, in Protoss versus Zerg. Then again, mostly he's playing against Dark, who is... Hero is literally, not figuratively, literally, the only person, the only Protoss who beat Dark in the last three months. Which is madness. Uh, the last stats we had up until a couple weeks ago. Dark is 20 and 0 against uh, non hero Protosses. He's 8 and 10 against hero in the series. Which is also a crazy amount of Protoss versus Zerg to play in three months. But <laughs> kind of. And also crazy that he played hero as almost as much as every other Protoss combined. But here we are. A whole bunch of Zerglings. Neither of those players are in this game. Max Pax and Solar. Literally one rank behind each of those. And here we are. Hydral is dead. A whole bunch more Zerglings. Solar stopping at 65 drones. He knows... Well, at least he... he is aiming towards a, a, essentially a big game timing. To fight Max Pax's incredibly micro-efficient Protoss. The blink, the plus one, about to complete. Observer on the way. The oracle's behind with potential stasis. Ah, the blink stalker's enough. The oracle's getting involved themselves. But the queens are on the way. And there's not too much space between each side of the map here. Just uh, that small low ground valley separating the bases as they expand along the edges. Groovy spines on the way. No gases at the third or the fourth. Zergling counter attempted picks off a, dr uh, a probe. More stasis on the back. Hydras and Langs again. Gonna try to fight it out. And Max Pax never left without a blink. Trying to poke out those stasis wards. Still not finding it quite yet. You see, he's, he's kind of treating him like, oh, massive! 
Oh my god, he gets all the Zerglings. In fact, this might be one of those that's actually too good. The awkward scenario of... Oh, looks like some Banelings tried to roll in there. He didn't kill any probes. Where you got you caught so many units that... Now neither player really wants to fight. He's gonna get a few more. He's gonna get up in there. Oh. Uh, the problem is they kind of just run away. Doesn't want to blink too many stalkers because then you're left at risk. The bridge is here. Now we got the Robo Bay behind. 76 to 73 workers. Both sides are able to get a little more economy during all this. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, the fighting on the bridges. That's, that's quite, a, quite a cool look as well. Shield battery overcharge helps hold for the few zealots there. Bane link speed is completed. Some of the probes on the run. The blink stalkers. Not enough for now. Whoa, loses six probes. Not too bad so far. Pushed up into the shield battery. Shield battery taken out, but the blink stalkers should be able to take the ladder end of this fight. And continues the blink. Plus two attack is nearly complete, but muscular augments for the Hydra is definitely going to help out. At Hydra speed. The Nexus itself is under attack. It's absorbing a lot of the hits, though. And not going down means that Maxpax is able to turn this around somewhat. A bunch of Bane Links. A single charge lot has warped in on the other side. But any damage, anything he can do is a big deal. The drones? Hmm. He finds the Warp Prism, though. The charge lot slicing up all the Hydras. The Warp Prism lives under the branches of that beautiful tree. Ah, oh, Colossi on the way. Changeling's taken out, but Max Pack's held on to that very important third base. And he's going to have nearly equal income now. Solar took a slight advantage, but the charge lots have cut into it. Meanwhile, more Blink Stalkers in the center of the map. What a game. These two. Mm. Dead even supplies. The Hydralis, not enough to quite push through right now. Oh no, the War Prism! Taken down at the last second. A bunch of the Hydras dragged back to deal with the charge lots. Max Pax will take advantage. The center of the map, as soon as he knows that army is brought back, he goes forward and clears out the creep. Beautifully done by Max Pax. Keeping control of the situation, which is so hard to do with these relatively fragile Protoss units. Plus two, plus three on the way. Armor and weapons, respectively, for Max Pax. Only plus one ranged attack for Solar. But he's nearly maxed out. No infestation pit. No hive. No vipers. No lurkers. Just hydras, lings, and banes right now. And with the Colossus count starting to grow, but here come the Zerglings from the back. The Stasis were not quite in position. The Colossus is getting surrounded and goes down. The Stasis is, uh, the Stacy are not our no. I don't, I don't think that's right. She'll better be overcharged. Banelings rolling in. And Max Pax is getting broken back all the way to his fourth. But charge lots warped in. Blink Stalkers are boxing out some of the charge lots. Solar getting strung out here yet again. His army disjointed. And Max Pax, whoa, 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 wait a second. Were there charge lots? There were charge lots. The charge lots, the fact that Max Pax holds the line. What a convoluted and. and Oh, he killed a hatchery, he killed more drones, and he held the attack with the Colossi. It's just weird to see GG as a Colossus goes down. But Max Pax fights a mid-game Protoss against a mid-game Zerg army, and he actually comes out on top. What a series. Three to two. Max Pax takes it, and well-deserved. Wow. Well, that, an incredible... Protoss versus Zerg. Max Pax playing one of the most difficult styles in the game, just in general. Jimmy, what happened to our fonts here? Well, we're... How many times? But thank you for watching. Truly hope you enjoyed. Thank you to World Team League as well. Um, and if you got the means of motivation, it'd be awesome to check out Patreon. We'll fix the fonts, I hope, at some point. Uh, otherwise... Ooh. Like and subscribe and all that. I'll see you next time. Good luck, have fun. Stay tuned.